sorry everybody i wanted to make one revise about my uh, dremel carving tool video that i just posted yesterday or today whenever um i said to hang them up high but my dremel is basically at the level where i carve okay even this one's a bit lower it doesn't help to have it lower because if you got your dremel hanging high and your flex shafts hanging like this all the grease is going to go into your flex shaft but if you got your dremel hanging somewhat the same level as your carving table the grease is just going to kind of pull up in the middle here and not get into your handpiece so much so maybe don't hang your dremel so high i just hang mine at the same kind of level as the carving table that's all here you have the cadillac of carving the fordham sr series or the TX series doesn't matter everything's based on my opinion and the facts that I'm gonna say is probably my opinions probably pretty well right you know if you go into a very high-end jeweler shop where they make their own jewelry I'm not talking about like your hobby jewelist I'm talking about your professional high-end stuff a good chance you're gonna see that there's a Fordham hanging there not a Dremel um, a mechanic shop that does lots of porting on engines a good chance you're gonna see a Fordham hanging there not a Dremel and a professional wood carver shop good chance you're gonna see a Fordham hanging there not a Dremel there's the Fordham there's the uh, what is it the Dremel uh, I'll think of the name in a the Dremel 40 flex there is the master carver in my opinion nothing can beat the Fordham the Fordham's the first tool that I got to power carve this Fordham SR series has 18,000 rpms okay the Dremel has 35,000 rpms the Dremel like I made in the previous video the Dremel and the Fordham you cannot compare them they're two different complete carvers I've gone through 15 Dremels compared to what one Fordham lasted me right so it says it. The Fordham is a lot more expensive. It's like a $400 tool. So you got the SR series, which is this one. That's the blue label. Then you got the TX series. And that's the red label. Okay, lots of the jewelers use the TX series. It's slower RPMs. This one right here has 18,000 RPMs. The TX has 15,000 RPMs. So it's slower, but it's got more torque. The SR series, I think it's 1.6 horsepower, and the TX is, I think, one third, one third horsepower. Don't hold me to the horsepowers. So what we're going to do in this video is we're going to talk about this Fordham SR and the positive points about it. Okay, you can see I got the, the solid metal foot pedal there. This Fordham, the Dremel, does not suggest using a foot pedal with their Dremels that have the speed control because you can cross the speed controls and wreck the Dremel or wreck the foot pedal. And I'll explain that when I make my next one of the videos on just foot pedals, okay? This is the steel foot pedal by Fordham. If you guys are gonna buy a foot pedal, I suggest buying the Fordham, spend a few more dollars because you're gonna, it's quality, right? There's steel ones and there's plastic ones, doesn't matter. If it's got Fordham's name on it, it's quality. Another thing too I wanna say, I did some research last night because I know that I was going to be making this Fordham video last night. I got an Amazon store. I know I sound like a used car salesman when I say this, but there's lots of Fordham SR series or the TX in my Amazon store now. So if you go to the description down below, you go to the Amazon store, click it, and you'll see all my carving tools that I use in the store. If you buy something from my Amazon store, I do make a little bit of a profit, but all the profit that I make from the store goes back into the channel so I can have giveaways and buy different tools to review. So that being said, if you go on eBay, be very careful because there's a scam company out there that sells Fordhams for super cheap. And they're not real Fordhams. They're knockoffs. They're made in China. Okay. So if you on eBay and you see a Fordham that says SR on it, the SR series that has a red label, it's not a real Fordham. It's a knockoff. If you're paying $150, $200 for a Fordham on eBay, if it's brand new from like a company, it's not a real Fordham. You might be able to get one brand new that's secondhand. You know what I mean? Somebody that's selling one. 
But if you're going to buy it on eBay, be very, very, very careful because there's a scam going on. And it's a uh, repeat parrot. Bah! It's not the real Fordham. So in this video, we're going to talk about the Fordham SR series, the foot pedal, the different hand pieces you can get, and the industrial flex shaft. So while this is just sitting here like this, I'll show you guys the different, you can get so many different hand pieces too. And on eBay, they sell knockoff hand pieces. This is a knockoff hand piece. This is from China. I think it was $20. It holds the really small dental burrs. I think they're 332 seconds or maybe even the smaller ones. Don't hold me to that. But yeah, so it works. I don't use small burrs like this very often, but this is, it works. It's just easy. You click this thing. The burr comes out. You click it back in and the burrs put a new burr in there and it's good. This is the little pencil style one. It's the cheaper pencil style one. This holds a one eighth burr. Okay. Like the burrs that I have in Dremel. You can see I got a burr broke off in there. That's how powerful this, this uh, Fordham is. Okay. Lots of torque. This is the hand piece that holds the quarter inch burrs. Okay. The burrs that go in your die grinders. So don't be mistaken when you buy your, your hand pieces, if it's quarter inch or one eighth or three thirty seconds. Also, when you buy these bigger hand pieces, you can buy, you can get the collets that will fit the smaller burrs inside of it. I'm trying to slow down here so you guys all understand, okay? So let me get this uh, camera in the overhead and I'll show you how easy it is to swap out the hand pieces. When you buy this S, I'll first say, when you buy this S or series or TX series, which one you're going to get, they're both great, okay? You're going to get it with the key drive flex shaft. Okay, this one has been upgraded to the square drive flex shaft because the flex shaft is thicker. I'll show you guys the flex shafts in a bit. I upgraded to the industrial flex shaft because I break too many key drive flex shafts because they're not thick enough. Like I said, the square drive flex shafts are thicker. Okay, so when you, if you guys are going to upgrade to a square drive, to a, sorry, let me slow down, Jordy, slow down. If you're going to upgrade to an industrial flex shaft, you have to make sure you upgrade your hand pieces too. Because these hand pieces are for the industrial one. They're square drive inside here. They're not the key drive. Again, I'll repeat it so you guys get sense of it. When you buy the, the industrial flex shaft, you have to buy the hand pieces to go along with it too. The key drive hand pieces will not fit on the square drive hand pieces or vice versa, whatever. Okay. I'll say now at the end of all these videos, I probably got another 10 more videos to make on all of the Dremel and uh, Fordham carving tools that I use. I'm going to do a carving and try and incorporate all the tools I show into that one carving at the end of the videos. So here is your flex shaft hooked up to your Fordham. Here's your hand piece. This one's, uh, the best one it's got sealed bearings it's just this when you get if you look at my amazon store go to the fordham site you can compare prices do what you want to do this one here is the best one right here for the bigger flex shafts you'll see the black lines down it okay i think anyways i'm not too sure if i'm wrong feel free to leave a comment below and correct me okay so here this one locks so you pull this back and then it pops out now you see this is square drive. Okay, that's square. See how thick it is? It's square inside there too. So I might have to have the Fordham running. What you do to, to put it back in is you run the Fordham really slow and then you pull this back and it will just click in there. But let's see if I can get it in without it running. Okay, so it won't go in, but I'll show you how to do it when it's running. So this is your smaller hand piece. That's, just, that's the great thing about Fordham. Okay, see there, it's clicked in. That's the great thing about Fordham. You got this, this hand piece for your bulking out, removing lots of wood. Then you got this for doing your details, right? So that's that. So let's get the Fordham plugged in. I'll put the foot control speed. You do with Dremel. I don't know if I already said this in the video. With Dremel with the foot pedals. Sometimes they work on the Dremel, sometimes they don't. It's hit and miss. I think Dremel just recently put something in their Dremel, so you can't use the speed controls with the foot pedals. 
Not too sure, but I'll figure that out. So I'm going to put this, I'm going to hook it all up. I'm going to hang the Fordham up. And um, actually, you know what we'll do before? Let me get the Fordham here. And we'll, like, we'll explain the flex shafts. Okay, how it hooks up here. And yeah, I got some extras I'll show you. Also, before I get ahead of myself, I want to say this Fordham has a forward and a reverse. Okay, this is the newer ones. The older models, the older SR, um, SR series do not have forward and reverse. Like reverse, forward, or vice versa. Okay, off. Okay, so here's some flex shafts. Here's the key drive. Here is the square drive. So you can see this one still has a spring in it. You guys make sure you have put your spring inside there. Okay. Now look at the size difference. Square drives to the left, key drives to the right. I had to get a square drive. I had to upgrade to the industrial flex shaft because I kept on breaking too many of these key drives. They were too small, too weak for me. That's because I'm a freak when I'm carving and I'm just trying to rush everything and I just carve too fast. I admit it. You might not necessarily need to, to upgrade to the square drive if you don't carve like I do. So see, and these things right here, see this? These, you take this off, you unscrew it, and then these plug into this, okay? I don't know if I want to go over the whole, taking this apart and go over the whole thing. I, maybe you guys can figure it out or there's some other videos on that. But you see this right here. Let me see if I can get it to zoom in. See that? That's a little Allen key nut, right? So when you put this, when you take this flex shaft off and you put this on here, there's a, like you see it's square right here. It's a square. There's a little square um, pin that comes out and this just sticks on it. And then you tighten up this little Allen key thing, okay? I've done it lots where this, when I'm spinning it, all of a sudden the thing stops spinning. This has stopped spinning, but my motor's still going. I've done it lots where this little tiny Allen key thing here, this little screw has come out and gone down into my inner flex shaft and just made a big mess of things, okay? So what I use to do this put this on, I get the Loctite, not the forever Loctite that, you know, once you use it, it's, you can't undo it. I get the Loctite. I don't know if it's the blue or the red. You guys will have to figure that out yourself, please. Sorry. I get the Loctite that you, it's not a hundred percent Loctite. You will be able to release this with some force. Okay. Because if I don't use the Loctite on this, it comes, and this is my opinion. There's might be some real pro car self-proclaimed pro carver tools out there and say you don't put loctite on it bada, 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 bada. i don't care okay i just don't care i do it because this will not come out simple as that okay so here you go the one on the right is key drive the one on the left is square drive see the size difference this one is the industrial one. It's more, it's more firm. It's more sold. This one's more flimsy, more kind of like the Dremel, right? So I suggest if you break lots of flex shafts, the inner shafts, pay the extra money if you can afford it and go to the square drive. I've, since I've switched over to the square drive, I've broken one flex shaft. When I use the key, the key drive, which is a lot thinner, I've broken about 50 of them. I'm not lying. I'm a freak when it comes to carving. I just want to get it done. I don't take my time and I know I should take my time. I could probably do a lot more quality carvings, but that's who I am. I break these too much. I had to upgrade. If you're the same, spend the money and upgrade. And don't forget if you're going to upgrade to the key, to the square drive, you have to upgrade your outer sheath too, right? So you're not just doing the inner shaft, you're doing the whole outer sheath too. Okay, so I got everything hooked up. I think um, the more affordable piece is for this, for the just the key drive is called the H44. I'm gonna post a picture of this one so you guys see the number for the key drive. And I'll post a picture of this one too for your smaller 1 8 bits. This one's the quarter inch. 
I'll post that picture right now. And then this one's for the smaller birds, the one eighth birds. Okay, and I'll post that picture. So anyways, I got the foot pedal hooked up. All you do is just, and this is a true speed control. It's made to go for speed control. You're not gonna have any problems. Okay, so all you do is just pull this back. The one that I showed you a picture of does not have this thing, you just click it in, okay? Pull it back, run it really slow. Boom, clicked in, okay? Pull it out, change your burr, run it really slow, click it in, done. That simple. So you got a bulk, you got a bulk remover, and you got a, a little detail carver. You know, there, you can get so many different types of burrs for these. I'm gonna be making a video, all the different burrs for these, all the different burrs for this. It's just gonna be a burr video. So let me get a piece of wood here and just show you a quick little bit of uh, carving with this and how easy it is to switch over to this. Okay, so this is a piece of basswood I got from Ben's studio on the lake. I'm gonna carve a wood spirit. I'm just gonna I'm gonna turn the fan on so it might be a little bit noisy, but I'm just gonna show you how you do some bulking out quickly with this. And when you want to do detail, you just switch it out and use this. So if you got some money, this is a great investment. It's probably gonna last you the rest of your life. The Fordham. Also, I guess I should show you how to replace the burrs in your Fordhams. You get this pin when you buy the Fordham, and you get the chain and you get this wrench, okay? So you got a slot there, a whole slot. You just put this pin through there, spin spin your burr till it goes right through. You can see it's right through. Use the wrench. You got a square screw here. I don't know why, but it stopped recording uh, audio. So all you do is you get that wrench and you just uh, unturn it, pull your burr out, switch the burr, put a new burr in, tighten it up, and you're good to go. Make sure you take that wrench, that pin out that you got in there before you start your drum, your Fordham. Trust me. So what do we got going on here? This one just show, shows you, just pull that clamp out, your burr slides out, change your burr, put a new burr in, turn the clamp back there where my thumb is, it's tight again. And that's just a cheap one off Amazon. Okay, so I don't know what happened, but uh, it didn't record any audio, so it's this is me doing a voiceover, and I really don't know what I'm saying there, but this is a piece of uh, basswood, and I guess I'll just show you it. Uh, I wanted you to hear it carving, but I'll show it at the end of this series. I'll show a video of me um, carving them. I'll carve some kind of maybe a wood spirit or something with all the tools that I've used in this uh, series. But I want to say, like I said, uh, make sure that you pull that um, the key lock pin out before you put your foot on the foot pedal. Because I've done it. I've had that pin in there and I put my foot on the pedal by accident. And it, it broke a flex shaft and it did a number. It bent that pin really good inside there and it was super hard to get out. So make sure, just keep your foot away from the foot pedal. And I also want to say that I didn't say in the video... If you can't afford a Fordham, it's okay to go to like your, uh, what do you have in America? You have uh, Harbor Freight there. It's okay to go to pr the Harbor Freight and get yourself one of those cheap Ch Chicago ones. It's going to get you started to be able to hold the uh, quarter inch burr. But make sure it's not the one that is like, let me see how I can explain. Make sure the collet, make sure it's a collet and not the one that is like a drill. And it's got the chuck in there where you need, it's got the three points and they open and they close. Because most of those, uh, those hand pieces that are the chuck style won't hold the quarter inch burr unless you can find one. So if you're going to buy that, Chicago, make sure, once again, it's the call it style, not that chuck style, all right? But you can also, if you buy the Chicago one, the cheaper Chicago one, these Fordham hand pieces will work on that because it's, it's, you got to make sure it's square drive or key drive, but the Chicago one is key drive. So that's going to be it for this video. Look how, look how much wood I took away from that super fast, right? So you be beginning wood carvers, try and you find yourself some soft wood. There's just me showing you the tool. 
And um, yeah, so find yourself some fo softwood to uh, start carving. It's better than hardwood. Um, I hope these videos are helping you guys. And um, like I said, you don't need to buy the expensive Fordham one. You can start off with the Chicago or another cheaper model if you want. If you guys uh, want to leave comments down below that do have the cheap mo models, you can suggest if it's good or not, if it's worth buying it. But I suggest once you get some money, oh, so this is the Master Carver Micro Carver. This is what the next video is going to be about. This is a more detail carver. I don't use it that often, but it's a great tool and it spins at 45,000 RPMs. Thanks for watching everybody. And um, I don't know what I'm doing here. And I don't know what I'm doing here either. I'll show you guys the uh, quick Witch Spirit Eagle that I uh, did after with just the Fordham. That's it there. So I did this in about an hour and a half, just quick carving. Just the eagle head, trying to practice my eagle heads with the wood spirit underneath that. Hope you're all good. And like I said, at the end of these series, I'll do a really good carving. One of my, I'll try to do one of my best carvings, incorporating all the tools I show on these videos.